Welcome to our review on feeding the world. When we're talking about our ability to feed the world's population, then what we really need to be considering is this idea of sustainable food production. And all we mean by that is producing food in ways that can be continued indefinitely. The first one of these methods that we're going to look at is fish farming. Now, hopefully we know that fish are an incredibly good source of protein. But the big problem we've had is in the past, we've carried out a lot of overfishing in certain areas. And as a result of that, what we've seen is a big reduction in the population of certain species. Now, as a way to try to tackle this, what we've seen is some changes in laws. So we've got international organisations which have introduced this idea of fishing quotas. So that means that when fishermen are going out, they're only allowed to catch a certain mass of each type of fish. Second thing that we can see here is having actual fish farms. Now, this is where we've got these cages in seas or rivers that have the fish inside them. So the key advantage here is those fish are protected from predators, but it also makes it easier to catch. You're not having to take boats out to sea and hope for the best. You want to go and catch the fish, go to your actual cage, there they are. And another big advantage about this is that for those wild populations, they are then able to recover because we're not fishing them. There are, however, some downsides to our fish farming. Firstly, we can have disease spreading quickly because what we find is those populations are close together. As you can see from the picture at the bottom that shows you some of these cages on a fish farm. And secondly, our other problem we've got is that there's a risk of diseases within those cages spreading to the wild populations. Because it's not like the cages are solid, as their name suggests, there is a mesh around the outside that keeps the fish inside, but it doesn't stop the wild fish coming close by, certainly close enough that they could very well catch diseases from those inside the cages. The second idea is based around the chemical use that we currently have in our farming industry. And when we think about sustainable farming techniques, those are the ones that are minimizing the use of these chemical fertilizers and chemical pesticides. And there's a few different ways that we can go about doing this. The first one is as opposed to using chemical fertilizers, we can spread manure instead. We could use the idea of crop rotation so that the soil has a chance to recover and it also helps to prevent particular crop pests from building up in the soil. So you can see a diagram on the right there of how we do this by growing different crops in different fields on those alternating years. Next thing that we could do is by growing disease or pest resistant varieties of the crop, which we've managed to produce through gene technology. And the last one is to reduce our use of pesticides further, we can use this idea of biological control. When we're talking about biological control, this is where we've actually used the natural predators of our particular pest species in order to control their numbers. So what we do is we breed these predators in really large numbers and then we release them onto our crops with the idea being that they're then going to go and eat those pests that would have otherwise eaten our crops. This isn't a perfect solution though, because we are dealing with living things and they're a little bit interesting at times. So when we've actually released them, the predators may decide that they're just gonna leave the area. And that means you've bred these predators and released them and they're not gonna eat a single one of the pests on your crop. Next problem is that they may decide that they fancy the look of a different organism in the area more than the pest creature, and so they might eat the other organism instead. The final thing we can do is use a process called hydroponics. And the key thing about this is that our plants are no longer being grown in soil, but they're being grown in a solution that contains all of the minerals they need. The big advantage about this is that if we're not growing them in soil, you don't have to grow them in the ground. And you can see we can stack them up one on top of the other to maximize our space and produce vast quantities of food in the same floor area. The other key thing to consider here is that one of the key areas that plant diseases come from is the soil. So if we've removed the soil, we've reduced the risk of plant diseases as well. 
Hopefully at the end of this video, you can talk about sustainable farming techniques and explain some of their problems and benefits.